Given your experience with Western students in particular, yes. <laughs> Western students, we're troublesome. We are. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I was wondering. In a good way. Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. um, what's the most significant issue you, that you wish they could just get right? Yeah. You know, if the, are there is there like something that is just kind of chronic, you know, chronically misunderstood or just... In the West? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> One thing I always try to say is, uh, not only in the West, but everywhere, that we misunderstand Buddhism as a religion. But uh, if you really look at the Buddhist teachings um, inside out, you can see for yourself clearly that Buddhism is science of mind. And His Holiness Dalai Lama also mentioned this again and again, and that Buddhism is a science of mind. And it's true when you look at it. So that's one of, I think, maybe chronic misunderstanding you know when you see Buddhism as a religion then turn it into a faith-based organization then it becomes uh, problematic problematic there's internal conflicts contradictions so it's not really a religion it's a genuine science of mind uh, it deals with your pure nature true nature of mind to discover and it deals with your, uh, you know, stains, incidental stains that are impure aspects of your mind to purify. You know, so it's just basically working with the mind. It's a deeper psychology. And so therefore, Buddhism, that's one thing. And the other thing is I feel that uh, uh, one misunderstanding is maybe like a teacher-student relationship that we need to clarify. You know, uh, it should not be seen as, you know, like up and down, high and low, but it should be seen as a friend, you know, true friend, a spiritual friend. And a friendship needs to be developed, uh, not like a, like a commanding level, in a hierarchical command, you know. Uh, and also, another point uh, that I feel will be helpful is to see how it is important to progress along the path of Buddhism by going through a gradual process of study and gradual process of practice, you know, meditation. One chronic problem for the Western students is jumping, jumping everywhere. You know, like we have so many choices when you go into a bookstore. There's hundreds of books on Buddhism. Where you start? Where do you start? We don't know. You know, we just pick anything that sounds interesting from the title or, or subtitle, or maybe read a few pages and sounds great. You know, so some people would just walk out from the streets wanting to know about Buddhism, and some people start with Kala Chakra. Yeah. It's like, you know, oh, the six dark, six, yeah, exactly. six yogas of Naropa. Yeah, it sounds oh, it's very, very hierarchical. Yeah, very yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so like that. You know, I think we really need to have a comprehensive understanding of a Buddhist path and journey and have some kind of progressive, you know, gradual process of study and practice. I think that will be very, very helpful. And so, uh, for that reason, I've been working on uh, uh, like a skeleton structure of a curriculum of uh, how, you know, the path fits from 101 to whatever level, you know, and uh, in terms of study, the view, studying the view or in terms of studying a meditation in a progressive way. So I think that's really very important. That's why I put a lot of energy and time into this. Okay. Um, so then and then that will help like people when you walk into a bookstore, you know which book to pick. You know, you know where you are, you, know, you finish this part, now you're into the next part. Okay, now I'll pick these books that relates to these topics, you know. So it will make it much easier for your, you know, shopping.
<laughs> you know, <laughs> you don't need to spend hours in bookstores, Barnes and Noble. Right. Okay. Or neighborhood bookstores. 